We got a fun app this week, babes. We got uh, my shark. I just got back from Shark Week. If you see the tan, we got that whole entire story. I just got back from the from the Netflix as a joke comedy festival. I bombed uh, television taping, so it's fun. Bunch of stories there. Bunch of stories there. We talk about uh, hatchet throwing and murdering people, and yep. and all sorts of fun stuff. I'm on in bubble app. wrap. I, I'm on uh, about 45 minutes of sleep, and I have a headache. Came straight from the plane, but it's going to be fun, fun, fun. It's going to be. Oh, we talked about the Bahamas. Yeah, we talked about Bahamas and your mama and your mama. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what else is going to be fun? What? Watching Special Weshy on Netflix. Correct. That's you can watch my comedy special. Also, you well, you can have a lot of fun on May 24th at the Vulcan in Austin, Texas, and May 26th at Stand Up Live in Phoenix. Whoop, whoop. Uh, two days from now, on the 14th, I am at the Beacon Theater in New York City, and the following week, I'm in San Diego at the Majestic on the 21st, and I am in LA at the Wiltern on the 22nd. Also, our merch is also available on our websites. Just go to the store. Get it, baby. You can get it at SalVolcanoComedy.com. You can get it at Christy comedy.com and get a joe de rosa comedy.com we got the merch baby and i'm about to announce 20 cities next week 20 new cities next week a lot of you've been asking all the ones you've been asking are going to be there check it out they're there baby and pimp has on new pants uh, uh, don't be a fake don't be a flake don't run away from your feelings baby Why man, man great till they, they got, got a hey, babe. babe. Oh, oh, sorry. So, got it. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah, I got it. All right. Ready? Yeah. Why, Why man, man great till they got a hey, babe. Woo! I, I just, just took, took a DNA, DNA test. test. Turns out I'm 100% hey, babe. Even when I'm crying crazy. Yeah, I got boy problems. That's a human in me. Bling, bling. Then I solve them. That's the goddess in you me. You could have had a hey, babe. Not committal. Help, Help you with your, your career. career. Just a little. You're supposed to hold me down. <laughs> but you're holding me back. And that's the sound of you not calling me back. Uh. Why man great till they got a hey, babe. What's up, Bubba? I got you a gift. Thank you, my friend. I, I got appreciate you a this. Gift. I was given that by a great. I, I, I did a show in Tulsa. Shout out Tulsa. I, did I have a blast in Tulsa? There's a new show coming out called The Tulsa King. I think it's you. Really? Yes. Okay, so first of all, the venue is so nice. They got me all these gifts. I, they, they got professional axe throwing service. Whoa. And they got me my own axe with the name on the handle. And before and after the show for like an hour and a half, I was throwing Chinese stars, daggers, and axes across the room, double fisting everything. Oh, my. I got to give you, the, I gotta give you the, the video. I have it. Please. Just two arms just throwing huge axes and stick it in the, in the wall. It's unbelievable. Oh, my God. It was I, good I, shit. Good shit. <laughs> an axe. I think having an axe, it's nice having an axe. I'd like a ball and chain. You know what oh, ball and chain? That I'd like that. Sick. Because a lot of people have axes. Yeah. And, and but not what they need. It's like on Kill it. Bill stuff. Yes, like yes. A, but a ball and axe. I think that might have been the worst way to die in a in a medieval war. Yeah. Is a ball and axe. Let me ask but you a I question. Think it's would, easily defended with a with a shield. Would you rather fight in a in a in a new age war or or a medieval war? You have to fight one. I got to go New Age. I you think go new, new Age? age. You'd rather fight New Age. Yeah, hit me with a missile, you know? Hit me, you know, maybe I get a bullet bullet wound, but that's that Middle Age stuff is... Hand-to-hand combat's no good. That's tough, dude. But here's the thing. Limbs and... You've seen uh, uh, Game of Thrones? Sure. But if a nuclear bomb hits you, everyone's going to die. Middle Age... <laughs> mid, uh, mid, you know, the Middle Ages... By the way, I'm also battling Middle Age. Are you battling Middle Age? Yeah. You are bad on middle age. Well, I guess so am I. I'm 37. That's Where, middle age. Yeah, because double that is 74. And double me is 90. I'm a man. Middle age man. Without a doubt, I'm in the second half. I mean, it's after halftime for me. 100%. And I think about that, and I get very depressed. And I'll tell you another thing. I am older than 100% of any athlete in all professional sports. Every athlete. Yeah, I looked it up. Even baseball? Because sometimes baseball has an old pitcher. No, I think I am. I think I am right wow. now. Wow. Which is, it's crazy if you think so about it. So do you want to do a thing where we try to campaign to just see if you can be the oldest player to ever make a professional sport? I'll do it. I think what? you guys are forgetting about somebody. Kane Tanaka? Tom Brady. Yo, Tom yeah. Brady is younger than me, though. Really? He is. Mr. Brady is younger than me. I also love that this fact haunts you. I think this is the fourth or fifth episode. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Wait, we gotta bring, we gotta figure out who's the new oldest now it's that a, Kane's it's, passed. It's a, actually a Brazilian woman that they found. 
They what do you mean they found her? <laughs> they found this woman. She's 122 years old. What was Cain? 119. Wait. That's what I'm what? saying. So she's been the oldest woman, but she was just discovered recently. So Kane Tanaka was never really the oldest woman. No. It, it was this Brazilian Maria Gomez dos Rias is thought to be 121 years old in this picture. Um, now she's 122. No, don't do Kane like that. Don't do Kane dirty. Well, because she, I've been thinking about this. There has to be somebody older than... E There's got to be somebody who's like 140. Yeah, that they're still using like a landline. They can't get in touch with nobody. Yeah, if, if, if they're saying that the richest people in the world don't want to be on the list, so like you think Elon Musk is the richest, or you think... Is that true? I didn't yeah, hear that. Yeah, but they say there's people that got way more money than them. They just don't want to be on no list. Oh, they don't want anyone to know what they have. No, so this, that's got to be the same for... For the the people, there's got to be somebody who lives like deep in the Amazon, who's a hundred, like who's one fifty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's messed up to come out after Kane passes though. Well, she was born in the 1900. In, the, in what? She said June 16th, 1900. Right? No. Yeah. So, so she's that, coming up. She's gonna be 122 coming up. Wow. Wow. She there needs to be some type of reality show about Loves Pokemon. Does she love Pokemon? Yeah, that's what it says. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> so does Logan Paul loves Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. Shout out Logan Paul. Yeah. I hope he grows up to be the oldest person in the world. He might, at the rate he's going. I think, do you think we're living in the time where, like, we'll conquer death in our lifetime? I don't know if in ours. But what do you think? Would you, if they can get you to, let's say they can get you to 150, right? right? As a reg. Okay. Are you still... Are years like 90 to 150 good years, or is it just like, are you going to be like a 90-year-old until 150, or is your 120-year-old self going to be like a 60-year-old self? That's a good question. I think that if you told me you could get me to 150, I'd say no. You'd say no. I'd say no because because are the people in my life going to die? I don't, that's what I don't want. Everybody's going to come along with. Oh, everyone's coming well, with me to 150? that's what I'm saying. I don't want to get older? I don't want to be... At 150, you will know no one. Nobody will speak to you. The world will pass you by. Technology, you're not going to be 140 and learning the new phone. Right. You're going to be alone in the house. Unless, though... Yeah, but unless... Because all the technology with... with, with um. You know, all the cell technology they're doing, the microchips. You might be able to start to get a lot older, like your body's going to get older, but they could put a microchip in your brain or something like that where, like, your brain stays young. Regulates. So, like, yeah. So, like, it regulates it. So, like, maybe they can't do anything for the vessel, but the computer in there, maybe they can, you know, like, you won't, your brain won't be old, but your body will be, which will probably be a nightmare. That would be odd to me, too. Like, if I was, like, bedridden or with a walker or could barely move, but... All of my faculties are completely good up here. And so I just can't. I'm like, what's up, buddy? How you doing? I would love to get up, but I can't move. I can't. Yeah, <laughs> but, but your, your, your voice isn't frail. Anything. Yeah. Uh, did I ever tell you about when I was a physical therapist, the patient I worked on that had a thing called locked-in syndrome? No, but tell me now. It's the most terrifying thing of all time. Locked in. They, Let me guess what it is. You got a guess, pimp? Don't I tell me no they guess. stayed frozen at that age. No, they... Actually, they were younger. They passed away, and thankfully, even their family was like, thank God they passed away because it was a nightmare. It's locked-in syndrome. You can either get it, I think, of a stroke or a neurological disorder or, or head trauma. You get paralyzed. Every single part of your body is paralyzed, except your brain is fully functioning and aware, and the only thing you can move is your cranial nerve 3, the oculomotor nerve. So all you can do is move your eyes back, forth, up, and down, and that's how this person would communicate through a board that was set up and their eyes would lock like on Stephen a laser. Hawking almost? Yeah. No, but Stephen Hawking even had more function than them. Stephen Hawking at least, like they, I mean, well. Stephen no. Hawking was like Cirque du Soleil compared to this guy. Exactly, yes. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Hawking was so doing yoga. So do they yoga. have a language? How do they communicate? Through their eyes. Wow. So their eyes, would, there was a keyboard, a letter board, and it would be, you know, if you would say, you know, uh, you know do you feel hot? And they write yes or no with their eyes. <laughs> I mean, I mean. And that person wanted to be alive that way. Well, they no, they didn't. Or is he like spelling out "kill me" with his no, eyes? No, I I don't know that that ever happened. But I remember like when they when he died. I was I was working as a physical therapist when he died. The family 
came in, like, you know, died, whatever. Like, they, they, they had died, like, uh, uh, the night before. And I came into work, and they're like, oh, so-and-so died. And I was like, wow. And they said, the family, which I was, you know, at this, in this home I worked at, many people died, with elderly or whatever. And, you know, families come in, be upset. They came in with a cake for the staff. They, their, per, their loved one had just died, and they came in, their, the family came in with a cake for the staff. Because they. For help, because they were like, thank God they're dead. Because they did that per like they it was like a horrible existence that this guy was living. Wow. So they were like happy that they were like he's he has to be out of pain. So they I remember they came in with a Carvel cake. You can't do much. You could watch TV maybe. No, he wouldn't even do that. I don't know. I don't even like. You know, we would go in there. I would go was in it, there. Did it happen there for an, because of an accident? I forgot what happened with him. I think it was he had a stroke or some type of head trauma. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. This is this AS, AMSR. I, like yeah. somebody is, somebody, I'm telling you, somebody is watching this podcast right now, coming their brains out. Well, I feel like that's normal. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> right, go, go, uh, go to, go to, hey babe, uh, hey babe pod at gmail.com, email us. Do you come to this podcast or not? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I played the Cox Business Center Tulsa Ballroom. They got me the axe throwing, then they got me all these gifts. I mean, dude, like 20 gifts. Oklahoma is where it's at. Part of it was, thank you, Heather, I believe it was. Shout out, Heather. Uh, part of it was this suit, and I said, you know what? I'm actually going to mail that home, and I'm going to give it to Chris because your career is popping off right now. There it is, folks. <laughs> and Also, because I just took a, a flight, and we're trying to be safe here. Yes. So I said, this is how I got on the flight. This is how I'm getting off the flight. I also don't want you to hurt a bone in your body ever. Yeah. I want to so protect my little boy. I'm bubble wrapped. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm bubble wrapped. Um. I sent it home and I said, it's going to go on the podcast. She was a podcast fan, so. Is she? Yeah. Now, Shout out. You were good with axes, aren't they pointy? They are, but they weren't coming at me. Thank Yo, God. check this. Check this. Thank oh, God. my God. Yeah. And also, like, it, what is the liability on axe throwing at a live event? I know. <laughs> but they had Chinese stars. What the hell? Knives. So what do you think the most practical weapon to defend yourself was after experiencing? Oh, wow. They put, they, and look yeah, at that. Check that out. Yeah. Yo, this is like legitimate. Shout out to God. Axe Here, talking to Mike. Talking to Mike. Shout out to Gotwood Axe Throwing. Oh, that's fun. Check that out. Look so, up. what's your plan for the axe? Where are you going to place it? Are you going to put it underneath your bed if anyone tries Ooh, to come fuck yeah. with you? Well, this is a hatchet. I'm told. You heard that? Yeah, that was yeah. nice. Yo, so I actually threw theirs, but I actually threw mine a bunch too. And and dude, you feel you feel like you're in mid the mid medieval times because you understand like like in ancient times, this jack somebody. If you like stole something, they would take this and yeah. cut your hand off with that. Yeah. Like, now, I and they light it on fire. It's insane. I know. It's, it's a insane. lot of cardio, no? It is a lot of cardio. You're yeah. right. And I took, and I, I learned the different rotations. Sorry. And, <laughs> like, I mean, I was, look, I'm going to airdrop you them, all right? I'm going to airdrop you. Airdrop that. Air, so you, airdrop it like it's hot. Airdrop it like it's hot. <laughs> I don't even know how to airdrop, so So, so zombie apocalypse, what are you doing? Stars, axe? I'll Did tell you, you do what, a sword? Was there a sword? There wasn't a sword. There was big, big axes, though, and hatchets and knives. And s- the stars are fun. You oh, just yeah. fling them. You don't really need a skill set for those. Yeah. But they, they do go, like, they are very light, and they go fast. And, like, if you miss, they would fly past your target. If you were going to get killed by one thing, oh, yeah. you are going to get killed by one thing. Or, ha- yeah, if you are going to get killed by one thing, would you rather be killed by a Chinese star, a Chinese finger trap, or Chinese food? <sighs> How do you get killed by the finger trap? Um, you starve to death because you can't use your hands anymore. You can't use your hands. You have no life. You have no you're life. almost like the guy. Just you're locked you can in, only so use your eyes. Yeah. yeah, you're locked in. I would go food probably. You want to die from Chinese food. I yeah. at least so. It's possible. I <laughs> 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 uh, feel that thing. So here's what I'm asking you, okay? I now have... Wow. Uh, because all these sponsors and all these things, I have that. I have a machete that I got delivered to the house. I have a bunch of field knives. I have all this stuff, stuff right? Now, somebody breaks into my house. Okay. Right? Mm. I don't have a I don't have a gun. I don't have a sword or anything. But I have this. Mm-hmm. You know, there's knives downstairs. But I gotta be honest. Unless it was really urgent, I don't know if I'd swing with this because that is you have to move after that. Yeah. Right. You're not gonna you're not gonna hit someone with a hatchet and then they go down. I don't and think then so. You clean it up. You get some Clorox. Clean it up. And then next the next night you're eating dinner there. You You're saying if you bludgeon someone to death with a hatchet that broke into your house, you would have to move out of that house. You gotta. You gotta. I, and you probably gotta go to therapy, right? I would. I'm, think, I don't think I'm prepared to look at that. 
Yeah, I can't do that. Uh, well, I think, would you want to move out of the house because you think that now the house is haunted by the spirit of the person you killed? I didn't even think of that. That's another thing. But I just think this gruesome thing that happened, that energy and that vision and that. Yeah. Well, look at me. What would it take for you if someone broke into your house and you had the hatchet? How far do they have to go? What, what does it have to get to for you to swing this at them? If they try to raid my closet of magic spoon. <laughs> that's it. Right Promo there. Promo code, hey, babe. That's it. That's it. Um, low, low sugar, yeah, low cal. Uh, yeah, keto friendly. Low carb, no, keto friendly. I, 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 think, um, I think, no. Well, actually, they're not a sponsor. Oh, anymore. yeah, they're not a sponsor. And if they want to be a sponsor, yeah. if they know what's good for them. Honestly, <laughs> then they better Ask give us again. a call again. Ask me again. Well, what would it take? What would the level, what, where would it have to go for you to swing this if someone broke into your house? If they tried to get into my HelloFresh. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's, Dude, if, if, if they try to take my Raycons, yeah. man. Uh-uh, girl. <laughs> no, I think, I think personally, so what I did was, and I got, it's actually on the way, being delivered to my house. By the time this episode comes out, it'll be in my house. But I have, I have a permit and I have a buckshot shotgun coming to the house what? yes you wait, can wait, legally wait, get these in new york wait, 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 wait. it shoots wait. buckshot it's a hunting what's, gun. what's a buckshot what it's a mean? hunting gun it's uh it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shotgun that shoots buckshot so but, but so buckshot's cut, meaning it's it's a it's, it's, it's buckshot meaning the buck like a buck like a no like it's a, like called a buckshot this is what, the like, thing because 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 of bucks yeah so is is it meant to kill it can kill anyone though so what what the thought is is if you broke into my house yeah, it's, I'm not going to come down the stairs in the middle of night and uh, not knowing how to, you know, use a sprays? weapon. It sprays. It sprays. It sprays. So you know how they say, "Say it, don't spray it." Yeah. Well, I'm gonna spray it. Spray it, not say it. anything. Yeah, because they also they also like the um, uh, the audible like click of a shotgun usually deters people. Wait. Wait, how did you get license, and how did you order this, and how much was it, and how do you get bullets, and have you shot one before? No. And is is is, is Vinny ha- f- fine with it? Vinny's fine with it. Vin- Vinny wanted this. Okay. So I have a safe in my house now. Okay. I, I put a safe you in the wall. You bought a safe? I got a safe, and it's in the wall, and that's where that gun's going to be. Okay, start from the beginning. Where did you get permitted? So the permit is you fill out just paperwork online, and then you have to go down. What is it, like DeVry? Yeah, it's like it literally you just for a hunting license. Hunting okay. rifle, you can get these things in New York. And then there's a hunting, like a, a, I don't know if it's NYPD, but it's like a licensing bureau at, through the state of New York. And one of my neighbor's friends works for them. So it's usually you submit it, uh, uh, you know, you submit the paperwork, what, you know, background check or social security, you have to do all that stuff. And then it takes months. Because there's millions, you know, not millions. There's a lot of people. So you've been at this for months. No, first you're mentioning. No, okay. no, because I, that's why. Because I know somebody track. in the office. My uh, 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 application was pushed to the top. So I now, I did, just filled out the paperwork last week. But I was told by my friend your application is so pushed to the top. So you've never shot it. No. Have you ever held one? No, but I'm good. Have go- you ever loaded one? Zero. Have no. you ever seen one in front of your eyes? No. Uh-huh. Okay. And your license? <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's no test what? you have to. There's no test you have to pass. But when do you? When do you? Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. First of all, it, don't you hunt a buck with like I have buck hunter downstairs? Don't you have? <laughs> don't you hunt a buck with like a like a like a proper? You when you're hunting bucks, you're just spraying bullets everywhere. Yeah, I think so. It just shoots really? buckshot. Yeah. So yeah. then you don't need to worry about your aim. Well, no, because it's the same thing like when you get a boating license. You don't have to prove that you can drive a boat. You can get a boating license with a, a New York State driver's license. And then you just hit the buck with the boat. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So so, so I'm gonna have the my yeah my yeah my buckshot shotgun on a boat. Wait, so what is it? How big is it? What does it look like? I genuinely have no idea. Should we go so to the you, gun range? Do you want to go to the gun range? Babe's date, the gun range? Is there a gun range? Yeah, Who on Staten Island. Uh, in New Jersey, too. Really? Yeah, there's a gun range that you could shoot. Have you, I've gone to, I've gone twice in my life. Have you done a shotgun? They kind of hurt. I believe that I did once, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's a little ner- it's nerve-wracking. You should Bert, practice, dude. Uh, I was with um, Bert Kreischer uh, yesterday, um, and he bought just recently bought an AK-47. Oh, good. So he has an AK-47 <laughs> on his. A, how could he have that? You can legally buy it. He had it in his property. <laughs> Why would he talk to, I was on Two Bears, One Cave, and he just, he's openly talking about his AK-47 <laughs> that he then proceeded to show me after the show. <laughs> Why does he need that? For bucks? For bucks. Man, yeah. bucks better look out. Oh well, that's God. the thing. is because you guys want to keep attacking comedians on stage, so yeah. now, now they're fighting back. Right. We're looking at you as bucks now. Do you know the guy who attacked Dave Chappelle on stage, he tied on... He had a knife... 
taped to his gun. It was like he had a bayonet. He had a gun. He had a knife. He had a knife. He had a knife. He had a gun shaped knife. Yes. It was a gun right. that had a knife inside of it or something yes. like that. And what was he going to do? It? Does anyone know why he attacked him? No, but Lunatic. You, lunatic. Uh, well, first allegedly, of all, he attacked him. Allegedly. Allegedly. So you know what I found out is that he actually. It had nothing to do with a joke or no, umbrage with a joke. No, or, it was like he wanted to raise awareness for homelessness. No. Yeah, it was like some weird thing. Well. But, but I found out that. That word didn't Rih really get out. Rihanna was in the front row of that show. And the show had ended, and Rihanna's security team somehow got separated from Rihanna, and Rihanna being pregnant, some like fan I think like ran up towards Rihanna, and not in like a weird not like to hurt her, but like just to get a picture. And Rihanna like went to cover her belly because she's pregnant. And Dave Chappelle's security guard that was blocking that entrance jumped down from the stage and tried to protect Rihanna, and that guy snuck up. So there's a conspiracy that it's all they were all in cahoots. Wow, I didn't hear any of that. This is the weapon here. Yeah. Yeah, what is, what is that? He probably made that on one of those printers, 3D it, printers. It's so hard for me to get my camera into these events. How did this get in? Yeah, how did that? Especially at a Chappelle show. He usually has, I mean, he takes your phone away, but he usually has, uh, doesn't he have metal detectors and shit? Well, yeah, dude, I was at the comedy store. He's gonna now. I was at the comedy store the next night after the attack, and, you know, you can normally, like, walk freely through the comedy store in Los Angeles, but he was performing there up in the belly room. Yeah. There was a wall of security that even... Comics who are comedy store regulars who free roam could not walk past these security guards. Like, you cannot get anywhere near him. What is the point of a gun, a knife at the end of a gun? It's like so a bayonet. It a, it's stupid. But, but, but a bayonet it, was long. It doesn't even make sense. Like, it's a handgun. So yeah. it's not even practical to use the knife. It's also made of plastic. That's plastic? Yeah, so I was saying, dude, he probably made that off a 3D printer. He could have, right? So this person no, was, was this person no. not all there? Yeah, oh yeah, he's completely, his family's so raise, mental health issues. So he sat through two hour Chappelle show laughing, yeah. Yeah. laughing at everything. And yep. then at the end was like, all right, I'm going to take my gun knife and I'm just going to raise awareness for homelessness. Now. And by the way, did you see his arm? He looked like a cartoon. Yeah, I know. They turned, it, it looked like a like, cartoon. Like Tom Segura. And then, and I, <laughs> I, I, I know he did. I heard that that was done after the fact to like send a message. Like that wasn't like, like Dude. security was like. Gonna break your fucking arms. He got stomped out by Jamie Foxx and Buster Rhymes. Jamie Foxx and Buster Rhymes were, were stomping there? him out. Wow, I haven't seen <laughs> I haven't seen Buster Rhymes stomp anyone out since school time. By the way, I just want to say oh, that it, I uh, believe Jamie Gangsters Paradise. What was what was what was that thing with who oh. with with that 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 with movie? Coolio? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> the movie with like Michael Rappaport. Where they were like, oh yeah, when he plays like a shooter, like a nut job. Yeah, yeah, and, and Buster Rhymes stomp somebody in that. Isn't that? I don't know. I, 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 oh, higher learning. Higher yeah, learning. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think Jamie Foxx is the most talented uh, entertainer we have in the world. In the world, yeah. I think he's the most talented person we have. So he is a. Personally, I think he's, he's a singer, a rapper, I guess. A rapper. A singer. Yeah, a singer, a, singer, a rapper. A singer, an actor. Yeah. Uh, a comedian. Yep. A fantastic comedian. Yeah. That and barely does stand up. He's a fantastic, and he's a great actor, right? He great actor. Ray Charles and all that other stuff. I haven't seen him in a minute, though. Uh, he also looks pretty young for his age, right? Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Jamie Foxx. Who knows how old Jamie Foxx? He might be the oldest man in the he world. He might be. <laughs> Baby boy. Yep. Uh, I've been there. You've been there. It could be hard uh, when you have some high interest debt, oh. and you can't feel like you can dig your way out of it. It's hard to ask for help. Right. And that's where something like Upstart comes in, babe. I want to find a way to say, baby, bye, 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 to high interest credit card debt. That's what I want to say goodbye to because it's one of the first steps towards financial independence. Yes, but the interest month at the month could feel like... You can feel like you're never going to get out. Dude, of it. Dude, I feel like never going to get out. It's it's emotionally draining. It's 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 physically draining. It's like draining. a hamster wheel. It's like a ha I literally feel like I'm on a hamster wheel. And the only way to get off that hamster wheel is to go through Upstart. Upstart powered personal loans can help you pay down high interest debt online with simple and easy un to understand payment terms. Uh, they know you're more than just a credit score. So yep. rather than looking at just your credit score, what they do is their their model consists of other factors like your income, employment, yep. and other information provided in your loan application. And you can check your rate in minutes for loans between one thousand to fifty thousand dollars without impacting your credit score. That's big. Fifty bands. Yes, baby. <laughs> you can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting the loan. Don't wait and check out your rate today at upstart.com slash hey babe. That's upstart.com slash hey babe to check your rate today. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you.
Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash hey, babe. All right. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Better Help, baby. We use BetterHelp. We love BetterHelp. We talk about BetterHelp here on a weekly basis. We're all about mental health and get your mental health right. I want you to get right with God, and I, I want you to get right with your mental <laughs> that, health. That is true. Yeah. No true words have ever been spoken. Yes. Uh, I have been overwhelmed lately, particularly. 100%. I'm filming. We are traveling. You're just swimming with sharks. I'm moving. I was swimming with sharks. Yeah. Shout out Shark Week. Yeah. Um, I get burned out, dude. Many people do it. Of course. Uh, and... I just overworked, and I need to feel some type of relief. What BetterHelp does, what I love about BetterHelp, is it's it's guidance counselors. It's like it's it's all on Zoom. They're online therapists. Online, right? I mean, I would say online therapists that guide you. Um, it's all on Zoom. It's all um done from the comfort of your own home. They're professionals, and it really just helped. And BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to, babe. It's more affordable than in-person therapy, which, by the way, I also do, and that is an arm and a leg, and my insurance only covers 70% of it. Yes. And you can be matched up with a therapist in under 48 hours. Right, because I was going to uh, therapy too, uh, you know, in-person therapy too, and my therapist's breath smelled like shit. So that's why BetterHelp- That's a pitfall. It, av- it avoids that too. If you if 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 you're you won't smell their shit breath. If your if your therapist got breath that's hot as ass, then it doesn't matter if they're with, yeah. with better help. You can eliminate that. Also, I was always a little <laughs> bit afraid to reach out and go to a therapist. I didn't know if they were going to be good or bad. Yeah. Or not. This is so much easier, direct, less yeah. committal, and you could dip a toe by doing yeah. it this way. No, literally, because I used to have another therapist that every time during our <laughs> session, for whatever reason, he would eat full eggs. He would just eat <laughs> scrambled eggs, and he would make them while we were talking. And now if the therapist, I would smell that and I would be like, why are you oh. eating old scrambled eggs all day? And now if your therapist is doing that, you can just simply be like, hey, I'd rather go to, to BetterHelp because if the therapist want to eat scrambled eggs, I can eat them all day because I ain't smelling it through my computer. No, you're not, child. Hey, babe, listeners, get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Hey, babe. That's BetterHelp, better, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Hey, babe. Um, speak, dude, now let me ask you a question. NASA Two things. One, there's about to be a hotel in space by 2025. Nope. Are you going to go? No. But what if they marry a Bond boy? <laughs> <laughs> if I can use points, I might yeah, go. Use points. Who's does, gonna go it does look can, beautiful. Come on. That's what it is? Yeah, it actually looks pretty dope. Nah, nah. Not for you. But how is it suspended up there? It's just going around the Earth's gravitational uh, No, pole. it's like, not. No, it's going to be a floating pod. Yeah, I think that it's going I think that it's going around like how like uh, a satellite goes around. Nah, you're not going to you build you're not gonna be able to good service up but there. But you got to build it on the ground, right? Yeah, so they have to launch it up, build it and launch it up. I think only a few hundred. That's it. It looks like a, looks like a it looks like a tractor tire. <laughs> I know. I was listening. <laughs> That's it what does. it is. It does look. I Why mean, do I need to go up there? I don't want to do it to, to 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 eat to eat food and watch TV. Why? Yeah, I'll go. What do you do at a hotel for the gram, bro? For the, for the that's, it is all yeah, for, for the, the gram. The gram can kiss my ass. <laughs> the gram. I think I think that um, the only cram I care about truly is graham crackers. That's true. Graham crack, yeah. I don't I care about graham crackers. Graham. What about graham? graham Norton? What about graham Hancock, who talks about? I don't know who that graham, graham, graham Hancock. Look into him. Oh. I care I, about graham Hancock. Graham Norton. I I wonder if I will do his show when I one day. You go, if you go to him, he still do, do that. Yeah. Yes. A graham you know, Graham cracker is unsung. Mm-hmm. It's basic. It's a basic bitch, but it's been around forever for a reason. What about honey grams? I love it. Oh, you mean the cereal? Yeah. Uh, I like them a lot, but they're not like graham crackers. You love te- what about Teddy Grahams? Yeah. Teddy oh, yeah, Grams? I love Teddy Grahams. Teddy Grahams are good, but they got to get a new flavor, though. They got honey. They got chocolate. Love them both. Cinnamon, decent. Chocolate chip, chocolate they're chip not is, fooling anybody. Yeah. The chocolate ones is what I consistently ate for cereal as a child growing up. That's why. I would pour the Teddy Graham, chocolate Teddy Grahams into milk. And that's eat that as cereal. No parent around at all. Oh, I, I, I would do that religiously. No, that's what my mother would give me for breakfast. Did she think it was a cereal? Because it kind of looks like cereal. Yeah, no, she. I maybe we created. Oh, do you know what I did? I went out to uh, breakfast yesterday, and do you know what I f- did? I took, I asked for a toasted blueberry muffin with butter, <sighs> so and the good. butter was melted in, and do you know what I did? And I feel like I created this. I had, there was maple syrup on the table. I cut this muffin open, and I poured maple syrup on the muffin. And I ate a blueberry muffin toasted butter with maple syrup added to the muffin. And did you ejaculate? <laughs> it was first of all, I couldn't see for about an hour. But it, <laughs> it was you got only toast. the best thing I think I I've know. ever eaten. 
in my entire life. A blueberry muffin is one of the best things to ever, a, to ever be invented. Blueberry muffin toasted with butter is so good that many times I order it, I go to take a bite, and it's so good that I th- want to throw the rest of the muffin off the wall. You just want to hit just somebody in the fucking, fucking face launch with it. it. Yeah. I want to throw it at the waitress. I think Bloobs is better than even chocolate chip. I think Bloobs is the best muffin. Yeah, blue, wow. I do. Blueberry you know what? I've it? never not bitten to a blueberry muffin and been like, I don't want to be anywhere but here right now. Yeah. Right? How come there's not raspberry muffins, cranberry muffins, cranberry? I think, f- fuck those berries, fuck really? Fuck those berries, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. They're like t- too tart. And, well, I yeah. think a bad blueberry can be bad, too, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But you know what? A cranberry, if it's not in a drink, which is just straight up, it's they're not great. You ever see those ocean spray commercials where how they get cranberries? It's like a, it's like no. a river of cranberries. Like, that's how they get cranberries. They don't grow off trees. They just float in water. No. Go to go to Ocean Spray Cranberries. Or but that's just, is that cranberry just the, is, is that just the, uh, is that, the commercial? No, look, look, they're like wade through water to get cranberries. What? Go to, oh, how do you get cranberries? Go mining for cranberries. Ocean Spray Cranberry commercial, maybe. Also, I've been totally thinking of raspberries this whole time. There's no, I've never seen a raspberry muffin. But you can't eat eventic. cranberries regular, right? You don't just pop cranberries. They're too, you, you can't eat just cranberries. Look. Look at, see what? Just the a heck? river of cranberries. That's how what you make, get that? cranberries. I don't know, dude. That's right there. This this is this is how this is how you stop a UTI. The only way. Is you gotta Whoa, go, that's a body of cranberry. That's a body of cranberries. If you got a UTI, no, go jump in that real. water. This is Allison Carr, sixth generation She's ocean, an ocean spray, spray farmer. farmer. Oh, in Massachusetts. They're harvested in water. Yep. Isn't that wild? That's a cranberry. They harvest bond. sleep. That is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, that this is how they get cranberries. I don't think that you can get them any other way. Oh, oh, or do they knock them off the vines and put them in the water? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but it's wild, right? It is. That's, like, what I've, never seen, are, I've never seen that. Like, are bananas on trees? They are. So you could have a banana tree in your house. I think you have the right climate for it, but yeah. Interesting. I want to have trees like uh, fruit trees when I get home. But what fruit trees can you really grow in New York? I don't really know. I don't think you can. I don't think I, our, our our climate whack as fuck. Otherwise, if I could, <laughs> if I could, I'd do lemon, orange, cherry. I believe. Interesting. That's what I would do. I think I could grow avocado. No, you can't grow avocado. Uh, there's cartels now are taking uh, avocados and limes. Yeah. Cartel is taking it over like it's cocaine. I know. I know. Watching that. Uh, b- by like the blood way, diamonds. Let me tell you something. I've been watch. I watch it on the plane. I haven't um, finished, gotten to the third episode yet. Baby girl, there's a documentary about, th- do you know about Three Mile Island? Never heard of a child. You know about Three Mile Island, pimp? No, is this the nuclear power plant? Bro, Three Mile Island is the United States Chernobyl that nobody talks about. What nuclear, are you talking about, boo-boo? Nuclear radiation coming out the ass since 1979, and these motherfuckers don't want to talk about now, it. Now, there's, there's a conspiracy theory on Long Island that this is where Lyme disease came from. It's Three Mile Island? Yeah. yeah. I, it, uh, there also is another conspiracy. This is where autism could have come from. There's a lot of conspiracies around no way. the Three Mile Island accident. And you just heard of this, Sugar Baby? Uh, I, yeah, Baby Girl. It's on Netflix. Which, you know what else on Netflix? Special Weshi, my comedy special. Ah, uh, Is it still trending? It's still trending. Keep it trending. R- no. uh, review it, right? Or rate it? Yeah. Uh, uh, you can. <laughs> Netflix now has a thing where you could give it a thumbs up. One thumbs up is like it. Two thumbs up is love it. Really? So I would love it. Love Special Weshi. I have not seen it on Netflix. I saw it when you sent it. I was going to talk to you about that. Talk to you me about anything you want. You were choosing between NYCC and that and all that stuff, and you so, just went full. Uh, I went full. I uh, put the, the special on Netflix. is 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 called Special Weshi, but there will be another special that I'm going to be releasing on my YouTube called at youtube.com slash Christy Comedy, and then yet a third cut that we're going to be putting only at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. So your boy, Christy Content, is trying to give the people what they haven't asked for, which is more content. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right now, so you're going to just release everything. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to release everything I have. And then also, I did yesterday, I was at the Netflix is a Joke Comedy Festival, shout out Netflix. I did um, Amy Schumer and Friends. had a, She has a show coming out on Netflix where like she hosts and then five comics do stand-up. Did and, she book you or did just someone? Uh, I, I think she did, yeah. And then I absolutely bombed on both tapings. So there's no escaping. Two it. tapings. So when you same see. Same set, the, both tapings. Same set, both tapings. How many minutes? Seven minutes, babe. Seven minutes is tough. It was Seven a minutes show, is well, tough. Well, here's the thing it was a show about the theme was parenting. 
okay, and family, and I went up first on both shows, but the theme was family, and I- You got that on lockdown. I proceeded to do instead, of, because I had just done all my family jokes on Special West Show on oh, Netflix, yeah. I had not a lot of new material, so I proceeded on a family show that Amy Schumer did jokes about family, great jokes about a family, I proceeded to do a six-minute bit about how my dog Larry died, and how he was given the wrong medication. I love that show. talked about, hey, babe, and it- the only way that joke works is if you laugh at the beginning, then there's a little bit of setup, you laugh a little bit in the middle, and then a huge blast at the end, right. and none of that happened. Nobody laughed in the middle. They kind of laughed a little bit in the... Uh, nobody laughed in the beginning. Subtle laughs in the middle, and then the end was a full cricket bomb. No. Full cricket bomb. The first show, I just got off and was like, whatever I have to do. The second show, I hit the punchline, which normally gets laughs. Absolutely bombed. I looked straight into the camera. I said, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> no, I, I, swear no, I swear to God. I, I <laughs> swear to God. I swear to God. keep that in? I, Did the crowd God, go nuts? What, the crowd said nothing. When you said, I'm going to kill myself. I said at the end, I said, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> and that completely, <laughs> I swear to God. Who is off in the Lee, wings? Pete Lee was the warm-up comic. Yeah. You know Pete Lee. Yeah, of course, guy. yeah. Dying laughing in the hallway back. He goes, I can't believe you said that. He goes, if Netflix has any balls... They'll keep that in. I said, well, they do have balls because in my special, especially Weshi, at the end of the Netflix, I say, I'm putting this whole thing on YouTube. Fuck, fuck everybody. But if Netflix wants to buy it, I'll sell it to you. Yeah. And they let me keep that in the special. That's cool. That's cool. But this one, I looked direct, dead in the camera and said, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> what other comics were did did every did other people bomb? Was it the crowd? Um, uh, Jay What's, McBride did what, very well. What was the space? The space was at this place called the Palladium. You know the Palladium. Okay, it's like a music venue. Yeah. Um, and they had chairs set up. I think what happened was this: one, my new jokes aren't very funny. Two is um um they. It, papered the audience meaning like uh -huh, yep. they nobody sold tickets to this this was just like in, in los angeles everyone wants to be an actor yeah. like, they were like thought they were like Wait. They, how do they not know better i don't know if it was necessarily i don't know i actually don't know why it happened that way but i for sure nobody came off and said they had a good uh, jay mcbride killed both shows give i'll give, give her props jay. on that shout out jay mcbride um but nobody commented on like how bad the crowds were um i, I mean we all commented on how bad the crowds were but nobody took it harder than me. I mean, I because I, I think going out first just ate a nice fat cock yeah. right in the face. Um, but it is interesting because I think... Go ahead, get in there. Um, um, oh, nice. Career's popping, babe. You read that? Well, is get it fun? Can you, can you flex and pop things? Well, it, 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 it's hot. Like, it's stuck to my skin yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. You could probably take a nice spill down the steps and get right back up. I think I'd be fine. Yeah. Honestly, to be honest with you, I feel like a nice painting. Yeah. That's what I feel like. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a genuine nice painting. Just go home in that and don't say anything. See what they say. Go, walk right in. Just See walk my right family. in. Don't say a word. Well, I have to take Delilah to a birthday party, so I might as well just show up like this. Yeah, just show up. Yeah. Yeah, when they're like, what are you doing? You just be like, there was turbulence. I just... Um. Yeah, babe. You know, it's one of those things where the thing is with stand up. When you, you know, we don't talk about stand up that much on this show, but when yeah. you do stand up, it's, talk stand up, speak stand up, baby. It's just it's it's difficult sometimes to turn over new material quickly on a t. Here's the thing with the TV taping: a taping you, seven minutes with a papered audience, not, not good. good. If it was just a seven minute set, I wouldn't have done those jokes. A and B, I would have just done crowd work, done a bunch of shit, uh, and then I I I also didn't realize that one of the, on the first set I did, I did a whole. S I did the, the, the Larry dying joke, and then I did a, two minutes of just shitting on Portland for no reason, just shitting on Portland. And the great comedian. You preconceived this, or you were just flying by the seat of your pants? No, no, no. no. These are the TV jokes set. that were approved by Netflix. Okay. Um, and then I didn't realize that the comedian going after me, the, the great Ron Funches, Ron Funches, another great friend of the show, is from Portland and had about 80 people there to see him at the show. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I never met Ron, actually. Ron's a great guy. Yeah, Just I, had I, a two week old, he's got a two-week-old baby. Yeah, peripherally, I know he likes wrestling and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And so, but, uh, yeah, so speaking of stand-up, it's the 12th. In two days, I will be at the Beacon Theater well, in New York City. New York City in two days from now. And then uh, you said LA. 21st, I'll be in San Diego. And the 22nd, I'll be at the Wiltern in L.A. Dude, the Wiltern, I drove past it. Nice venue. A lot of, there's, um, the LA now is starting to get a little bit uh, uh, better. Shady? Just, Shady or? Uh, where I was, I was staying at the W in, in Hollywood. So yeah. mine was kind of like a war zone. Where is the Wiltern Theater? The Wiltern Theater. I heard it's like a beacon theater. It's yeah, beautiful. It, 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 I drove past just the sign. I don't know, where, like, I don't know LA. It was something, you know. It's a big theater. I, I, I mean, I'm. Oh. Trying to sell that out, Los sell Angeles. It. Sell it out, motherfucker! It's, ju it's just in a week and a half at the Wiltern, twenty second. Um, 
Uh, so your trip there was good. My trip there was good. I just come off the plane. I flew. I got on a six a.m. flight this morning. Landed here. Came right. Came straight came right here. to you. Um, you grind, know the, the taping. The taping. The Amy Schumer taping ended last night at one a.m. They, I was picked up at three. Oof. Tough baby Oof. girl. Tough baby girl. Shout I, out Amy Schumer if you're watching and we know that you are. We know that you are. Shout out Amy. Babe, rollback? Yeah, babe. First of all, if you've seen pictures of me lately, I'm wearing rollback all and the time. And you look good. Thank you. You do. I've been wearing... Rollback is a company. They got performance hoodies, performance polos, performance Q-zips. The performance hoodie is the best... Piece it's activewear, right? It, it's activewear. It's the best article of clothing I've ever bought in my life. No, best fit, best feel. They sent me packages of it, and then I went and used our promo code, and I bought like more hundreds of dollars worth of this merch. No, I'm like people are making they fun of me. They sent me. It looked amazing. It, they sent me the wrong size. I gave them to my dad. He's over the moon about it. No, it literally is. I'm telling you, I for summer, for spring, every all seasons, I'm wearing rollback. I wore rollback on the on the um. On the on the Netflix taping I bombed. No, uh, I wrote back on. Really? Yeah. I like the little dog logo. It's the best. They are gaining a lot of traction. So uh, of course you guys are gonna get a deal, right? Uh, always you get a deal. Use with the, the babes. code use the code babe on rowback.com for a generous twenty percent off your first order through the end of this week. That's spelled rowback. It's R H O B A C K dot com. Twenty percent off all polos, Q zips, hoodies, tees with the code babe. Make sure to check out their freshly restocked hoodies and new masters gear just in time for the spring. Hello, Fresh Baby. What is it? It's America's number one meal That's kit. That's what it is. And thank you for sponsoring this podcast. Uh, with Hello Fresh, what do you do? You get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. You know, and you know what I did last week? It, you know, Sunday was what Mother's did you Day. What you cook? Pass? Hello Fresh, I made the lemon regatta pancakes and the French macarons that they have. Bro, unbelievable. My mother. Enjoyed those pancakes so much. She got up. She said, I don't even want to be your mama no more. Whoa. That doesn't track. <laughs> so yeah. Why would she happened? get upset? If she, if they happened. were delicious. By the way, you said macarons. Yes. And I always thought it was macarons, but I found out last night it was macarons. You oh, really? said it correctly. Look at that. Yeah. I didn't even know. But I will tell you this. We even cooked HelloFresh. If you watch the No Fresh doc. Which was Pimpy, edited beautifully and directed by The Homeless Pimp. Yes. A lot of fun. We actually did a HelloFresh ad on there where you and I cooked a meal. Yes. And it was fantastic. And HelloFresh is truthfully, it's something that's become a part of my life. It's become a part of Sal's life. Um, we love it. I love to cook with it. I I would say I eat HelloFresh for 90% of my meals per week. That is more than me, but I do eat it at least twice a week. HelloFresh has fit and wholesome recipes for satisfying and nutritious meals that you can feel good about with six recipes to choose from per week, including low-calorie and carb-conscious options. You can change what you, what you order. You can stop at any time. You could do all that jazz. You do all that jazz. And if you go to HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe16 and use the code HeyBabe16, you're going to get 16 free meals plus three free gifts. It's literally like they're giving the food away for free. That's HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe16. Use code HeyBabe16 for up to 16 free meals. What are the gifts? I mean. If you've done this. In the comments, let us know what gifts you received. Let us know what the gifts are. I'm telling you what the gifts are. Mysterious. The, the lemon regatta pancakes could be the gift. <laughs> um, I I was do did really good on my diet um, until two nights ago. Um, I just was up. Uh, I was exhausted. I I I was like I'm not drinking. And everything L A everything closes early. The only thing that was open Domino's. Mel's? Okay. Domino's. So I went to Domino's. <laughs> I went in. Okay. We got um, banana peppers, mushroom. Medium pizza. Uh, we got breadsticks. We got... Who's we? Uh, me and... You can't out them? Oh, it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> it actually was just me. <laughs> yeah. And then we got the brownie, unfortunately. Oh, I don't. I never had that. Yeah, Is that the, the Oreo cookie thing? Uh, With icing? No, it was, a, it was uh, a, like just a standard brownie wow. in, a, in a tray. Domino's, dude? You couldn't Domino's. find anything? No, and I got a Diet Fanta. <laughs> So I don't even know they I had. got the Diet Fanta. Oh, yeah. I, I came, while you were there, I was in the Bahamas hosting Shark Week Oh, this my week. God, I want to talk about this, Shark Week. Yeah, it's pretty wild, but I ate terrible. What'd you eat? I ate everything, bro. I, I didn't eat bad at, at uh, no, I didn't eat too bad, actually, but I did eat bad. But let me tell you something. You ever go to the Bahamas? Yes, I have. Okay, I stayed. Shout I out Horseshoe Bay. Shout out Horseshoe Bay. Uh, I stayed at Atlantis 
years and years and years ago. A couple you found times. the lost city of Atlanta. Found it. Wow. I stayed there, and you know, like eight nine years ago, it was pretty good. But I stayed at Baja Mar. Okay. This time, so they are a huge property with three hotels on it competing with Atlantis. Right. And they have the Hyatt, the Grand Hyatt, the SLS, which is like a W, it's like a party hotel. And then they have the Rosewood, which was obscenely priced. I got to tell you, I got to just say this. Baja Mar, if you're listening, and we know that you are, you got to do something about your prices. And this is coming from someone who is still single with no children and has saved money. Right. But dude, I ordered at the pool. I ordered a... Uh, it was called a ginger snap. Okay. It was a Casamigos tequila with some ginger beer and a little bit of mint. Sounds actually great. And I ordered a seltzer. Okay. $52. What? $52. So apparently I asked, I said, can you just put a double shot in there? So it was a double shot, but that was it. It was one drink and one seltzer was $52. That's too much. And they charge you a tax for the Hamas. Mm -hmm. Then they charge you a 15% service tax, not for the person giving you the drink, but for the uh, staff altogether. And then that person makes it a point to tell you, I don't get anything out of either the Bahama tax or the Bahama tax. And so if you want to tip me, you got to tip on top of that. So then I got a tip on top of the $52. I tip five on top of it for the drink. So it was $57. Mm -hmm. And I walked back and I swear to God. Oh, so what happened was he poured, he poured the drink. I said, is this good? So after he made the drink, he slid it over and he goes, taste it. See if you like it. So I went to taste it. I sipped it. I couldn't taste tequila at all. Right? There was like no tequila. I just tasted like sweet ginger beer. Oh, so you so say was like, you could taste. Now you didn't have COVID. No, no, no. Okay. It could, he put nothing in, okay. barely nothing in it. So I didn't want to insult him. So I, he goes, How is it? And I go, No, nah, it's good. It's good. I go, You know what? I go, uh, This way I don't have to come all the way back here. I said, Throw another shot in there. Yeah. And uh, just because I'm like, I can't taste it. So he drops the check. It says $52, right? And this is before he gives me the second shot. So I'm looking at him like, are you fucking kidding me? So I tip $5, and he comes over, and he looks down to get the check. And I know that he looked down and saw that I tipped, that I tipped yeah. on top of the shit. And I know that he knows that it was $52. I asked him to, I tasted it, and then I asked him, and then he rung up the check for the both, and then he didn't pour the drink yet. And I signed it, and he looked at it, and I was like, all right. Maybe this guy is going to give me a heavy pour on this one because it's clear that why I ordered a second one. Right. And he knows he's getting me for the right. price of a bottle of Casamigos right. on one drink. Yeah. And the guy opened the thing and he poured out. I, I was a bartender for a decade. Right. He poured out less than another ounce of alcohol. Wow. And I, I'm not the guy that's going to be online being like, because I used to bartend and people would be like, yo, let me get this. And I would make it. And then they, they already had it predetermined. They were going to be like, it's not strong enough. Right. They were, there was people that would do that all the time. They'd be like, nah, you got to put more liquor in there. Because they just want more Because they just want more. And I know how to bartend. Right. And I'd be like, no, no, that's what it's supposed to be. If they were if they were a dick, I'd be like, that's what it's supposed to be. If you want another one, you got to pay for another one. I wouldn't right. take no, I'd take that bullshit. Yeah. But I'm not going to be that guy to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just walked away yeah. with a... Even with his second shot, I couldn't taste it. And I sat down, and I literally just cursed for like five minutes <laughs> on vacation. I'm like, $57? I feel, I feel like... I feel terrible. This is terrible. This and they, is they gossip down there because I stayed at the same spot and I kept asking the bartenders who's the worst tipper, famous person, worst tipper. No tip shit. Or, yeah. But $5 is a good enough tip. On what? a drink? I mean, if there was $52 already, Five. I was actually confused about everything because I didn't find out that you didn't. I thought that I kept on doing this. I kept on putting additional because right, there's a line for tip, mm -hmm. right? But it says that tax and then it says service charge tax for the hotel and that's 15%. And I'm always like, I hate... When a server, I get it when they have to do it for parties of over six or eight because they don't want to get ripped off a server. They, right. they want to make sure they get at least right. something. But I do, so I get it. But when they put it on, when I'm dining with like a person right. and they put it on, I'm like, you screwed yourself. Like, why do that? Because I would have gave you, I tip like 30 to 50%. You know what I mean? So if you so, went out. So sometimes I'm like, I'll just give you what you asked for then. Like, you know what I mean? So was dinner just like $6,000? Dude. For like a we had We had, one, we had one dinner for, um, uh, for someone's birthday there, and it was like, damn, 15, there was like fifteen people at the table. Oh my god! Oh. All ordering drinks, five grand. Yep, <laughs> five thousand. Yes, it was. Did you get hit with the bill? Yeah, we we, we split it. Oh, you split it? Okay. I, no, I mean, I we, we split it with was, two. I split it with two people. Was that on resort? <laughs> Yeah. Because the off resort gets even crazier. Yeah, the off resort, resort is. I thought off resort would be less no, money. It was, was forty five hundred dollars. 
a plus, I added more. So I'm looking at the 15%. That's the rent. And that's when I found out. I'm like, well, 15% of $4,500 is a lot of money, kind of. So I was like, but I'll put additional. So I would put additional like 150 or whatever, like, right? And I'm thinking it's additional. Meanwhile, it's really just 150 I found out after the fact because they like split the 15% with all the staff. So they really know how to get you. Yeah. But I would go eat a meal. I swear to God, dude, I went to a, I went to an Italian restaurant on, on the premises. It says chicken parmesan. I said, does it come with anything? They said, no, it's just a cutlet with sauce and cheese. There's no pasta or nothing with it. A salad, nothing. A bread, no, nothing. I said, all right. That was one of the things I ordered. She goes, I go, how big is it? She goes, it's a four ounce breast. Oh my God. I said, and I go, four ounce? She goes, four to six ounce. She brought it. I ordered. It was a chicken cutlet that big with sauce and cheese on it. And it was like the plate dwarfed it. Do you know how much that chicken cut the parmesan was? Honestly, with what you've been saying, $35. No. 50 No. $56. No. Yes, it was. And it was a chicken cutlet that big. I would have meals every day there that here, the meal would be about $60. $60 total, all in. The meals were $400 for a $60 meal here. Yeah. $400. Now, did, did had, why are people even going I to had, the Bahamas? I though? had a side of pasta with that. Yeah. And then we got like mozzarella for the table and like a salad. And I had, did I have a drink? I had one glass of wine. And the bill between... The bill between four people was $471. Okay, so here's the thing with me, though, like with the Bahamas place like that, right? Yeah. So you hear that, you know, like now it's like I wouldn't go. How could a family go there? Exactly, because it's like, and also like, let's say, you know, you're you're in Fuck all y'all if you're watching Bahamas. I know you're watching. (laughs) Shout out Bahamas and fuck all y'all. And by the way, fuck the Bahamas since day one. You know Bahamas is Nassau. Day one, fuck you. Nassau, Bahamas. You know what that was? Nassau, Bahamas, That's the that was the uh, all got started. That was the uh, where pirates, that's like the original pirate capital like blackbeard and really all like famous pirates was Nath, the nassau the bahamas was where all the pirates that was like the capital of pirate there's a great netflix show called uh, lost pirate kingdom and it's all about and it was all there all nassau so they've been pirating is since that day just, one is that lore been stealing or, or, your are, loot. They, are they like chests with treasures in it it was that lore no no uh, what happened was so what with pirating what really what happened was is 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 that when it all got started is Spain, you know, like the Invincible Armada, that Spain used to, they used to rule the seas. They right. were ruling the seas, the seven seas, and their Spanish uh, Armada, which was the best fighting force for like a hundred years, um, started to lose a lot of their uh, ships from shipwrecks because Bermuda Triangle stuff, for all the hurricanes and all that stuff. Because they would, when they would come from a lot of sunken ships, from, there. I scuba dived to them. Well, that's why well, Port- you did, and Puerto Rico. That's why Puerto Rico became so important, the rich port, because Spain would come from uh, Spain and they would stop at Puerto Rico. You know, that was a beautiful island that was like halfway point or whatever. They would stop and like rest and all that. And then when they would go on to the Bahamas, go on to Florida or whatever, a lot of their ships would wreck. And the Nassau, Baham- uh, uh, there was a famous storm. I forgot what year it was where like 40. Um, uh, Katrina? 40, uh, Hurricane Katrina. Yep. 40 uh, sh- ships from Spain shipwrecked and like had like, millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of gold and that's when that's crazy stay gold <laughs> stay gold <laughs> stay right yeah. there babe stay gold this is back to Tulsa I'll tell you about that so but. so that's yeah so so 1.6 billion a large Spanish galleon that sank in 1656 yep they yeah. sa- they found they a found it that's what they were looking for Blackbeard and all those guys were looking for this a 400 year old shipwreck that was full of gold silver emeralds and artifacts estimated at 1.6 billion in the Bahamas well, let me tell you, you're going to need that to have dinner there. <laughs> exactly. You're going to need that. But my, I was furious. No, I, but I'm talking about like with the Hamas, like, like if you're from the U.S., right, why not then just f- go to Florida? I know. Like what's the I, difference seriously between I, the Bahamas and Florida? Seriously, what's the difference? Well. Oh, is the Bahamas beaches are that much nicer than I, beaches in Florida? I don't. Well, I, well, I think some of them are. I think some of them are. Okay, I don't know much of Florida, but isn't Florida just standard like waves hitting the beach and not like pure tropical solace? Cause there's pe- there's places in there's places Can in we the Bahamas so true true uh, true uh, <laughs> pure, what, what? pure pure tropical, tropical solace. solace. <laughs> no, because there's places in the Bahamas like next to no waves that is crystal crystal blue. Like I took a boat out I, every day. We were on the boat. I was in the high seas every day. That's why I had no service. I was eight this o'clock. Is what I want to know about not the tipping. What were yeah. the sharks like? What the hell happened? Sharks was crazy. <laughs> 
Okay. Does so, you would just go out and find sharks, or they had like a no? Sonar we had a whole thing. thing. We had to do this whole hour long episode. Uh, it was me, Q, and Mer, right? And we had to go out there and host this whole week. And we all did shark dives, dolphin dives, and we also got to do our, some of our bits out there. And then we also like wrote our own storylines. Wait, a minute, you guys prank sharks? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I prank. I I I got into it with kids. Yo. I prank kids. Great. I prank kids. Big. <laughs> I, I did a whole thing. So we had these three storylines. So the, the storyline was that Discovery gave us this big budget and we could use it any way we want. That's true, though. Right. And so Q decided that he was going to hunt for the Staten Island Red Devil shark, this shark he saw as a kid. And oh, so God. he actually got certified. To It was, I mean, all joking, you know. But he got certified as a scuba instructor before we went there. I right. couldn't end up the time. So when we went there, he did a 60-foot dive to, a, to an abandoned ship amongst dozens of sharks. Mm -hmm. like, like out in the open sharks? Out in the open. How, how is that safe? Because they are trained to not attack you, and he went down with divers, and they had sticks in case the sharks came to poke the sharks in the nose. Uh. And he, he he went down, and he didn't have gloves on, and apparently at one point they were throwing chum out so the sharks would go around him, and he like was lost his balance, and he had his hand behind his back, and a shark started to go at his hand, and this guy, shout out Dr. Dr. Craig. Shout out Dr. Craig. Dr. Craig is on Shark Week every year with the celebrities year? that host. It, it was like that. Well, it wasn't that many sharks, but it was like that. Oh it was like, it was, they were like uh, reef sharks. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like that. That's what they were doing. And the sharks started to charge at his hand to, to bite it. And Dr. Craig saw it the last second and shooed the shark away. And it was going like this. And it went right away from his hand. And he didn't tell us that till the last day. But Q was supposed to be. He would have bitten Q's hand off for real. Possibly, yeah. Apparently, Jackass hosted it a couple of years ago, and this guy Poop, a poop Poopy, Poop, yeah, shout out Poop, Poopy, poop, yeah. Poopy, he like wakeboarded off a ramp or something and landed on sharks, and they bit his hand off, and it was swinging off his arm. Oh. And they they like they wanted to get bit, but it it bit him that bad. Oh my! God. And they had to rush him out of there. Out of there. They said his hand was hanging off, but anyway. But you guys could do some great pranks if he only had one hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So, so Q did all this stuff. He did this dive. And then Murr wanted to speak to dolphins and decode dolphin language. Oh so God. he had all this equipment he bought and he did a dive with dolphins. And then he wanted to speak to dolphins so he could learn dolphin language to talk to the sharks to tell the sharks to stop attacking us. These were all like ske sketches, you know? And then me, I was afraid of sharks and didn't want to do any of it. Right. So... I didn't, so I I bought, I took the whole budget and bought a diamond watch. So I have a full P, like DJ Khaled, P <laughs> Diddy, like 100% diamond encrusted glistening watch the entire episode on. And I'm just like, yeah, I didn't, I don't, I don't want to really talk about how I spent my uh, budget. <laughs> now, is this a crossover? Is it your format or their format? No, it's their format, but we did do two of our bits. We, we like, almost like in the movie, like we, we, Weave them into the actual storyline, right? And uh, and then and then so I had to meet with kids. So my my whole thing was I was afraid to dive with the sharks. So first I was going to go to the kids to the uh, nurse sharks, which okay. are like they're still six feet, but they like supposedly don't bite. They suck, right? But they said are they, they hot could, nurses. They could suck your arm. Right <laughs> I was like, Ooh, good hot night, nurse sharks. Yeah, suck. <laughs> So they suck, and he goes, yeah, but the thing will suck your arm off. And on suck camera, your arm off. as he said, and I, and I go, I don't want to get sucked off. I mean, if I, I go, if, <laughs> I, I, don't I, get if I have a choice between getting sucked off or the teeth, I'll take the teeth. Exactly. <laughs> so, so I'm talking the to kids. suck off. Yeah. So I'm talking to the kids. It's ridiculous. They don't know. Like, they just, their parents volunteered them, but they're thinking they're signing. Are they local Bahamian children? They are, but they're not necessarily just Bahamian, Bahamian natives. They're anyone and everyone who just lives there now. Got it. And so the parents parents signed them up to go with the nurse sharks so they had no idea so i'm down by the nurse sharks alone and then the kids would come down to this lagoon and it was just me and the kids and then i they had long lens hidden cameras and i would just bullshit with the kids right. for like an hour i talked to like 10 different kids ridiculous stuff ridiculous and it was really funny and then in the end all the kids did the lagoon dive with me with these nurse sharks and the shark there was seven of them and we were in like Thigh high, uh, high water, 
And these sharks were just circling us, dude. And the guy was throwing chum, and they'd come, and they'd suck it were out. Were you nervous? Truthfully. Truthfully, like, were you nervous? Truthfully. I was shitting my pants. <laughs> really? There, I, there was one point where I didn't give a shit. I took every kid, and I, I grabbed them by their vest because they were wearing life vests. I wasn't. I put my arm through their vest, and I was holding the kids, three kids, like a shield. And every time, <laughs> and, and the kids started screaming and crying. I didn't even care. Every time a shark would come near us, I would turn the kids, and they'd be like, no! They were like, put away from me! And I'm like, just calm down. It's all right. It's all right. And then the shark, and I had them on my arm like a, god, like a goddamn human shield. I was holding them out. Like, the, I wouldn't let the shark get within two feet. My arms length, I was holding the children out. Like, it was a hostage situation. That's and the kids would be like, no, no. And I'd be like, shut up. Just shut up. It's going to be fine. Don't make a move. It was That's scary. Hilarious. And then I ended up getting on the third day. We did dives every day. And we went out into the middle of nowhere. And the third day was really, really rough waters. Okay. So I took the medicine. We had medics on there. We had a shout out to the whole crew. They were amazing. Shout them out. They, these guys are in the rough waters filming. They go down in their scuba gear with these big cameras, these huge cameras they hold like this. And uh, anyway, I, I never got seasick before I got seasick. Okay. Well, that, that feel, what is Throwing that? Nausea. Up. Oh, you're fully puking. She puking, right? So we made a joke. So at the beginning of the episode, we're like, hey, we're here on Shark Week. It was like a drone shot that was we were going to introduce the episode. It was going to pull away and see us on the islands. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, hey, we're here for Shark Week. Stay tuned. It's going to be great. And I had fake vomit in my mouth. And that was a joke we just were going to do. And so when the thing, I was like, yeah. And they were like, check it out. Stay tuned. And I'm like, what? And I threw up everyone. I'm like, Shark Week. And then it just, the thing went away. And then I guess I was foreshadowing because I was throwing up the entire time and they were recording it. So I guess oh. it's going to be on camera. But they put me in the shark cage. I wasn't going to go free swimming with them. But they put me in the shark cage and in rough waters, though, and it completely tore me up, ripped, I banged up my legs. I was bleeding. The thing was rocking like it was an earthquake. Underwater. Underwater. It was rocking like it was an earthquake. I'm in the gear and everything. I go down, and basically they were going to try and dump this stuff that's going to attract all the sharks to the cage and then they want to test out a repellent to see if this repellent worked so once they dumped all that and the sharks swarmed they dumped this after a few minutes they dumped this repellent it turned the water bright green and to see and it didn't repel them okay so i'm slamming back and forth in this thing and i'm already seasick I was seasick. This happened like hours in. Were you throwing up in your scuba gear? No, but like as soon as I got out of the cage and back on the boat, I lifted it up, leaned over, and threw up everywhere. Oh. Wow. And they had dead, rotting, like, fish, a station that they were slicing these frozen fish. They were called bonitas. And they were slicing them, and they were raw and smelly and bloody, and they come for the blood, right? And so it was, that was everywhere. And so when I got out, I was smelling that, and the boat was rocking, and I just started throwing up everywhere. Oh, my God. But I'm in the cage, and the cage is rocking me back and forth, and I literally can't get down because it's, it's so rough. So then I come back up. They put weights on me. They tie me up with weights so I could sink down. And I get to the bottom of the cage, and the sharks are coming. And, you know, I'm not that scared because I'm in the tank. I'm in the cage, right. you know. But it's shaking so much, I grab the cage to, like, oh. keep myself down there and to stay down. And I grab the cage, and I grab two bars, and I guess the water shook. And I just went... And I didn't know it was a door. It and opened I just, the cage? The whole, the whole cage opened. The whole thing, like a, like a windowsill. The thing just went, boom, and went to the top, and the whole thing was open. Oh with sharks everywhere. sharks everywhere. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. So and I was, like, trying to pull it down, and I couldn't get it down, and I slammed it down again. And then a few minutes later, it happened to me again. Because, like, when you're, when you're getting hit back and forth, I'm just grabbing for the tank to steady myself, and you grab for any pole in front of you, and it swung open again, dude. So what... I, they didn't come in, thank God. They said, because if, if, if a shark would have went in there oh, and then it like God. fell down, me and the shark would be in the cage <laughs> all ourselves. And that wouldn't have been good. So now when you're looking into a shark's eyes, what does it feel like? It, they look demonic. Okay. They look demonic. Truthfully demonic. They're like little beady, like gray, dead eyes. Like now, d like you feel dinosaur energy, right? I don't, like, yeah, yeah, yes. It feels like that, yes. And and look, I, I'm not here to give bad PR to sharks. Sharks, if you're watching, <laughs> and we know that you are, shout out sharks. Shout out sharks. Shout out sharks. I'm not trying to do yeah. that to y'all. I'm not trying sharks to do that. And sometimes. watch Shark Week, because it's fun, and we're going to, it's it's coming on July 10th or July 17th or something. But it was, it was a really, really, really good time. But when, I mean, when the shark door opened like that, I mean, could you imagine getting stuck? You know what's crazy? I don't even know if I signed a waiver. I, oh, I, yeah, I did. I think I signed my life away. <laughs> Do you, but, but like were there any before. of them like great? Like if you, if the shark no. was in the tank with you, it wouldn't have killed you. 
Or no, it could hit an artery and kill you. Yeah, it could hit but an artery. But it's not a great white where it's going to rip your head off with right, one bite. There were right, little sharks. Right, but Dr. Craig, who lives here in, in Montauk or up in Long Island, I'm going to go with him this summer. There's great whites off the coast of uh, Long Island, and he's going to take me to see great whites. I'm not going to get in the water with him. He gets in the water with him. Unclear. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. We should have him on. That's awesome. So Yeah, he was great. So the cage, though, like... Like there's not like there's no way anything can really go wrong like in a serious way with the cage um, like like how deep in the water are you? Okay, so there's multiple cages. The cage I was in had an open top, so they don't want to lower it too much because then a the shark could just go into the top. Right. But I needed that because I'm claustrophobic. So they had originally built me a special cage just for me, and the cage <laughs> the cage they the built Volcano. the cage. <laughs> <laughs> Because they knew I was scared, so they wanted to get more out of it. They built a cage for me that they were going to lower 15 feet. And the cage is like you get in and you close it. And it's just like really like kind of the size of a little bigger than your body. So it's not like a square cage, like a prison cell, but like a, like a smaller cage. And instead of having big bars like a prison, it has little, little bars like grates. So you can't get your hands out. But then on the top, they cut the whole top out and they put a plexiglass window. Oh, wow. So that there's nothing there like that. And this thing's on a stick and it's completely closed and they could, so then they could lower it down 15 feet. So that's what they built for me. So I was out there and the thing's rocking back and forth and I'm throwing up and I'm getting sick and they go, we're going to put you in this thing. And they didn't tell me they made a special cage just for me. And then they showed it to me and I go, I can't go in that. And they're like, why? And I'm like, I'm completely claustrophobic. Like, if you're going to lock me in that little cage and then put me 15 feet down, not only can I not get out of the cage, but I can't get out to breathe either in water. I said, I don't want to go down there and then ruin this whole shoot for you because if I get down there and I can't take it, you're going to pull me right back up and it's going to get effed. So Murray switched with me. And he went in that cage, and then I got in the cage that had the top still open. So, so mine still stayed relatively near the top of the well, water. Well, that's what my or next question is, could you communicate with them, Simon? If you were like, I can't do this anymore, even in the other cage, uh, you need to pull me up. Is there any way? Or you can't. Okay, so in, in past lives, I, I, I went scuba diving once in the Grand Cayman, and they were just talking about signals that you would do, like if you're okay, if you're not, if you're this, if you that. And those don't work anyway, by the way, because I had one instructor and me and my friend, only two people with one instructor. It was almost like a private lesson. And she's like, do this if you can't, or this if you, she's telling me all these hand motions. And she goes, all right, let's go. And we went down 30 feet and she was ahead and then my friend and then me and we were trailing her. And I, there was like five times I needed her and I'm fucking signaling, but she's just, her back is to me and she's just going <laughs> forward. I'm like trying to tell her I'm fucking stuck. I'm, yeah. I look like I'm doing the Macarena and, yeah. and she's not even looking. And I'm like, what good are the signals if you're just going, you're 20 feet ahead of me going straight. Great. Anyway, <laughs> I said mean, that to them on this, and they go, no, we have the technology now. You wear this mask. It's almost like an astronaut mask. Wow. And your f nose and mouth are free in it, and there's a button on the side of it that you push that has an intercom that talks to the people upstairs wow. and the other divers. So I was like, what? So we could talk underwater. They go, yes. So I go, all right. Went down. We all did it. We all did our dives. We all went down. <laughs> it never freaking worked. The oh, intercom never, never like, worked. I, you, they would, you would hear me, us trying to talk, and them trying to talk back to me. But it was like- Could barely hear anything. Could barely else. hear it. It was like staticky. It was cutting out. It was, and I, we never understood each other at any given moment. By the way, uh, you're, you've been on multiple cages in different shows. I was on a bear cage. Bear cage? With that grizzlies. The, the cage with the zombies. You, you stay in yes. cages, yeah. man. <laughs> it's crazy. I stay in cages, you stay bro. stay in cages because, because, you know. Nicholas Cage. Because I, it's funny, too. Uh, Nicholas Cage. Yeah. Right. But what, what I feel like all those cages, but what we don't talk about enough is the cage you put yourself in emotionally. <laughs> this has been Hey Baby. Yeah. Merch online right now. Go get our merch. It's all out right now. <laughs> Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe.